Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the group. I'm Rachel Arazzo. I am your intuitive tarot mentor. Hello. And I will refresh and make sure that I am actually live. <laughs> I hope everyone is doing awesome today. I will be talking a bit about yesterday's full moon in Scorpio talk that I did with Susie. And I'm going to give you guys updates about exactly what to do in the future for when I have those talks. Yay! People are coming in, so I assume that's good. <laughs> Hi, Colleen! Holy crap, there's a chance in here? I didn't know you were in my group chance. Hi. <laughs> um... Hi, Kimberly. Let's see. Let's make sure. Let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. I hope everyone is doing wonderful. Hi, Leticia. Shout out. Hi, Pamela. Shout out to a lot of people this week because a lot of people are really busting their butts. Um, excuse, I still don't know what my hair is doing. Um, and you guys have been doing absolutely wonderful. What is this thing with Facebook where... Am I live in the correct place? I should be. Hi, Michelle! Am I r live in the right group? I might be. I might be not. I am? Okay. <laughs> because it's weird that on Facebook now there's stuff popping up on the side. Let's see. I want to pull it up so I can do comments with everybody. What? It's not letting me see it. Reacted to my video. I hope I'm in the right place. <laughs> I hope I'm in the right place. It's not letting me see it in the actual group. It just says Rachel Arazo is live now. Whatever. We shall see. Yeah, okay, so there was a lot of confusion. I'm on my personal page? Oh no! That's why. Whatever. Let me share it then. Whatever everybody can see on my personal page. I don't really care anymore. <laughs> so people on my personal page, hi, I'm a tarot reading teacher, so. <laughs> whatever. Whatever. That was an accident. Everybody in the world now knows. Whatever. I don't care anymore. Whoops. <laughs> Let me share this. Whoops. Went live on my main, my personal page. Double... Click to join me. Okay. Oh, I love you too, Pamela. <laughs> oh, that's stupid because I thought I was actually in the right thing. Whatever. Okay, so what's going on, basically? So everybody that was in my group that was having problems going over to the full moon and Scorpio thing yesterday. Hi, Diana. Um, basically what was happening is you have to be a part of my group and you have to be a part of Susie's group in order to do it. So let's see if this works first of all. See if people are having issues. If not, I'll just go live in the other group. Because I'm getting people from the academy. <laughs> but I don't see anybody else that's not directly friends with me. So let me see. But... Um, for those that were in Susie's group, um, you got to see it and you got to get the gift. That's why I went ahead and posted it in the group yesterday. But apparently people are having problems going over. So every month for the Moon Sister Circle, we're going to be trading off and on. So next month we will be talking in our group. Hi, Lisa. Um, hi, Johnny. So we're going to be talking in our group next time, like in the group that we originally have. But next time, uh, the week after that, not the week, the month after that, we'll be in Susie's. So we're going to trade back and forth. So if you're not in Susie's Witchy School of Wisdom group, 
Now you know. <laughs> um, I know last month, we're still testing out the kinks. We were in Zoom last month and everybody got to go from there and it was all over the place. So next time it will be better. But go into the group, um, Chron Academy Study Circle. Go in there. I put up a live yesterday so you guys can get the free thing. Let's make sure still that people can come see. Send me an invite, please. I will send you an invitation. I will put up a link. Whatever. Whatever. Okay, so today I was going to talk about five things every tarot reader does wrong starting out. Because... Hi, Susie. Um, just in case you guys don't know, I'm an intuitive tarot mentor. So that means using your intuition and things every day in order to help you learn tarot better, right? So who here, I know this is probably a good thing. As we list these off, um, raise your hand or give me a heart or a like if you have done these things. So who has thought that if they're wrong in a reading, they're fake? Give me a like or a heart. I know I personally have. Like, especially when I first, first started out. And that's bullshit. And I'm going to tell you why. <laughs> because there's so many different reasons why you could be wrong. Yes, it sucks. Ah, uh, so when it comes to... <laughs> when you first start out, you have this pressure in your mind. Because we're in such a society that if we do not get what we want when we want it and it's correct then we screwed up, you know? So, and that automatically thinks, makes us fake, that makes us not worthy to be readers. It just ruins everything, you know? So it's a matter of getting past that. And sometimes it's not even other people doing that to us. It's ourselves that we feel like if we can't get this person 100% right, we're wrong. And that's bullshit. <laughs> it's, we are all human, okay? We make mistakes. Not all of us are going to be tuned in, tapped in, high vibration all the goddamn time. That's not realistic. Not all of us are happy all the time. Not all of us are laughing and, oh my god, life is great all the time. No, sometimes we're really down in the shit and it just doesn't work. So what happens instead is we put this imaginary pressure on ourselves that we can't do it unless we're always right. News flash, you're not always going to be right. Okay. Um, there are times I do a reading. I've been doing this for freaking ever and I still get it wrong. Whatever. The thing is to let it roll off of your shoulders instead. And to still make it work for you. Then obviously there is a miscommunication there. Because one thing that goes with it is we put all of these, like I said, extra pressures on ourselves that if we don't get it 100% right 100% of the time, <laughs> then we're horrible and it's not true. Let's see. Let me do comments. And mute myself. Obviously I have sound. <laughs> Let's see. It's all good. Let me see. Letitia says, yes, I feel a bit of a fraud if I get it wrong. And that's okay. The, the thing, we have this image in our minds of the psychic in the gigantic auditorium going, I have a message for Bobby. And it's from his wife who died 15 years ago. And her favorite color was blue. And she was missing her left shoe. Is he here? That's not right. <laughs> If you if you don't work that way, you don't work that way. And that's why I wanted to talk to everybody about psychic development all last week, with, like this month as well, because it's not true. Um, not all of us is, oh my God, I, I feel the humors. It, it doesn't work that way <laughs> for a lot of us. It's a matter of finding your own kind of triggers, learning, okay, when am I losing it and when am I actually spot on with this when are the cards telling me one thing and i'm 100 percent right about it and when are they telling me another thing and I'm like no that's bullshit i'm gonna trust myself you know so it's a couple different things some of the comments aren't popping up pamela says i want to know how people do readings when you're going through grief Ooh, that's a really good one so that's a really wonderful way to think of it because let's say you are a reader and 
you are going through your own personal stuff. Like Pamela, I know you're going through your own personal stuff. And you still want to get out there and you still want to help other people because we're all healers and we want to help other people. Or we need to make money. And you have your own livelihood. You've got six kids. It works. So, but your vibe is super low. There's the better you feel and the happier you are, the higher of your vibration naturally is. Um, and when I say vibration, I mean like a tuning fork. The higher the pitch and the more it vibrates, that's the sound emitting out. It's the same thing for your emotions. When you're happy, everyone around you can feel you're happy, you're smiling, your smile is contagious, your laugh is contagious. Um, so if you're really low and you can't do anything but cry and everybody can feel the energy in the room is lower, that is a time when you want to do readings to find a neutral place instead. So let's say, how do you find a neutral spot? Because you don't want to go from super, super low to super, super high really quick because that's bipolar and it's going to make you feel funky and it's no good. So let's say instead you find a neutral spot. You can do that by taking a nap, by meditating, by watching something funny and not forcing yourself to laugh but forcing yourself to feel kind of pleasant with it. Do something you love to do, like play video games, or take a bath, or read a nice book. Distract yourself from what has you grieving, at least for a couple of minutes, and you will come back to the situation in a much lighthearted way. Does that make sense, Pamela? Does it make sense? Let's see, she says, actually, last night I was going to go on Facebook Live when I felt good and figured it would help me and others. Yes, that's one thing. If you feel yourself being really, feeling really, really good and really, really high vibe, and you feel the urge to do something, go for it. It works. Kimberly's right. Reaching out and getting support is also very good. Yes, and the big thing when you're feeling really, really low is to make yourself... Get support from somewhere, distract yourself, do something that you can to cope. And if you feel good for a long period of time and you want to do something, go for it, but don't push yourself. You know, like right now, Pamela, I really wouldn't push you. Like, don't push yourself. You're super stressed enough already and you're super woman already. <laughs> yeah, Kimberly says, I will always advocate for counseling and getting therapy. Yes. Yes, um, there are some things that sunlight and walking and nature will help with, but sometimes medically the chemical imbalances your, in your brain, if you are diagnosed with clinical depression or bipolar or ADHD or things like that and you can't do it on your own, it is more than okay to go to a doctor and get medication to help you. There's nothing wrong with that. Don't shame yourself like that. Yes, take care of yourself first. So when it comes to readings then, Take care of yourself, get to a neutral spot, and see how that goes for you. If you are in a really happy spot and you feel like you can handle dealing with other people's energies, fine, go for it. If you want to do that, go for it. So, here's another one. Who here, as an example, has had a client before, or done readings for friends or family, um, or co-workers, and it's been for free, or even if it's been paid? And afterwards, they constantly are talking to you and constantly messaging you, asking for help. Or, what if I do this? Or what if I do that? And they feel like just because you gave them a reading, paid or otherwise, especially free, um, that you then answer to their beck and call. Give me hearts or likes if you have done that. If you have those people leech suction cup onto you. Because I have, and I'm going through a couple experiences with that right now, and it is not fun. Yes, awful situation. Family says, yep, I've been doing good for the last couple days. I let the palliative nurse know what I thought of the damn system. Good. I'm glad. Speak your mind. She says, oh, lots of free readings, and they ask more questions. Yes. Ugh. <laughs> Here's the thing. You have a life. You do you. <laughs> when it comes to other doing free things for other people, there's a difference. If you volunteer and help someone with a reading, fine. That's your thing. 
if you have an understanding with them. And this is usually better if you're working with another spiritual worker or energy worker or witch or whatever you want to do with or another tarot reader. Fine. Um, they're usually really good about doing it. About not asking so many questions. It's the people usually that are really new or they're really desperate and they're only focused on their zone and not on other people. So, for example, I got a kid. I'm on my personal timeline. You guys see my kid. <laughs> I've got a husband. I've got things to do. I've got bills to pay. I don't have... My business hours are from 9 to 2. And a lot of the times, I will, ex I will go outside of that. That's bad for me. I shouldn't do that. Bad me. I shouldn't do that. Um, and that's just because of how I am. If I can feel you genuinely need help, I'll help you. But there's a difference between... Here's your reading for you. I give you support to ask me for clarification if I need to reword it. But going, and what about this? That's another reading. That's something entirely on the side. Or if we need to talk about this for five years, that's there's a difference. <laughs> that is when, okay, consultation fee. Then you need to pay for another reading with me and we will go over it again. Yeah. So... And exactly, Lisa, the whole, and what about my job? And what about this person over here? Even though we're doing a reading on this person over here and all over the place. There's a difference. <laughs> Stop shooting on yourself. Yes, I know. I do it too. Yeah, that's a really good point, Rolly. It's, should we do this? Maybe I should help them more. Maybe I should do this. And it's a self-worth thing. I used to do this all the time. For my very first paid reading. Not even for the paid readings. My very, very first readings I ever, ever fucking did. I went on Tumblr. I did anom anonymous readings. Someone would ask one question. I'd pull a Celtic cross, which is a good 11 cards. <laughs> um, and I would do these back to back to back to back to back to back to back. So I'm pulling more than enough cards than I should be. <laughs> which now when I look at that, I'm like, oh my god, there's so much that I could have added in here. But no, uh, I'm not limiting myself. Or when I very, very first got my first reading, it was $11. This lady was asking one question and I sent her nine sub questions to, to fix it. And all these cards, I did so much work and all these cards, I had out the altar and the candles and I meditated and I did everything. Because it was like, I want to make sure she gets good value when she answers, her question is answered. But here's the thing, she paid for one specific thing. That's what I need to give her. Um, and when it comes to even doing practice readings, which shout out to Amanda in the group for doing practice readings in the group yesterday, you did wonderfully. It's okay to only pull one card. Don't feel like you're undervaluing people because that's what you can handle right now. And just because you give something to somebody for free does not mean that they can value you less by using up more of your time and mistreating you. Okay? Let's see. There were questions. There was stuff. Leticia says, switch it from should to would. Yes. That it's a wording thing. Can't comment on my personal page. Oh, no. Sorry, Lena. I'm glad that you're here, though. Um... Yes, when you switch the wording, even in doing a taro spread, when you switch the wording a teensy bit and stop giving responsibility to somebody else, should is one of those things like, should I do this or should I do that? No. You have free will. You will decide what kind of thing you want to do. Don't make, give me the personal responsibility for it. You're coming to me and as an advisor. I'm not going to tell you what you do with your life. Okay? <laughs> so... Get the should out of here. It's would, if I did this, what would be the answer to it? Let's see. Pamela says, yes, I caught myself answering the many questions during a reading. It turned out she was a reader, too. She should have known better. Yeah. Um, and as readers, sometimes... Um, yay, Amanda can comment now. Um, sometimes when you have that personal response, you feel like you have a personal responsibility to tweak other people. So it may have been one of those moments where she was giving a step back just to see how you would do it or to see if you would catch it yourself. So, because some people will do that. They will take advantage anyway. So, one big thing about this for psychics coming to your beck and call is 
learn what kind of people you want to work with and when you want to work with them. So that thing for the energy again, if you're feeling really low energy, do you really want to talk to that person that is super, super clingy, clingy, clingy? Probably not. They're going to drain more from you. Um, if you're super high vibration and you're happy and your day is going awesome and you found $500 on the sidewalk and you got chocolate and your tea was perfect and you drank it at just the right temperature. If you're having an amazing day and you re get a really low vibe person, that's okay. You can still work with them. Okay. And you can still maintain your happiness while helping them come up. There's a difference. Don't let them bring you down. Okay. And here's some things to think, keep in mind as well. For those who don't know yet, I am super theatrical, hence all the hands. Um, I have a degree in theater and I like to think of doing readings like this in terms of a improv, improvisation. So when two people walk on stage to do improv, they're making it up off the top of their heads and they're giving off of each other. There's literally an energy exchange. If I walk on stage and I give a suggestion for turning a knob, what do you think's happening? I'm turning a doorknob. I'm going in somewhere. Depending on how their hand is, they might be walking into a house. So if somebody comes on stage then, or if they're on stage as well, and sees the person turning the doorknob and they walk in, it's like, oh, hi, honey, welcome home. You acknowledged their action and you said yes and and you worked off of it. The energy is building. You're working off of each other. But if I'm turning a doorknob and then they come on like, hey, Pete, can you help me with these boxes and don't acknowledge they were about to walk into a building, then you're cutting off the energy. Same thing with tarot readings. If me as a person... Let's say, I don't, I don't need names, birthdays, favorite colors, none of that mess. I don't do that. Just tell me what the situation is, and I can help you with that, because I go off of your emotions and what you're thinking. So, if I ask you, tell me a little about, about your situation, and you say, okay, I need to talk about this person, because we haven't talked in a few days, and I'm worried about them. Okay, that gives me enough. You're giving me turning the doorknob. You're giving me a suggestion. I tap in. I do the cards and we have conversation back and forth. I'm going to ask you a question. Kay, do you know if this person's in a relationship? I have a card here with a child. Do they have a kid? I'm going to work off of you. And if you answer me honestly and go back and forth, we get a really wonderful, not improv scene, but a really wonderful reading. But if you get the person that gives you the copy pasted text or they say, or you ask them, how can I help you today? And you're like, I don't know. You tell me. Automatically, you already know <laughs> this reading is going to be difficult. And it's going to be really hard to work with this person and make them happy. Or even to answer their question and give them the guidance that they need. And you might have a friend like this, even if this is not a paid reading. If this is just a friend you're working with. If they're doing the test the psychic. It's not going to go well. <laughs> it's not going to because it's, I'm not going to go to your job as a programmer and sit there with a really good computer and be like, I'm going to test and see if you can do your job correctly just to make sure. And if you tell me something's wrong with the computer when I know there isn't, then I know that there's, then you're lying. Then you're not telling me the truth. You know, <laughs> it's, it's bullshitty. Don't do that crap to me. No, don't, don't play that game. That play, that game is horrible. It's all about equal energy exchange. So don't answer to people's beck and calls and don't fall for that, uh, you know, let's play the game kind of crap. That stuff is horrible. There were comments. Let's look at comments real quick. Let me know if you have questions as well. I love questions. Questions are yummy. And put them in the thing. Let's see Miss Stuff. Man, says, thank you so much for helping me. You're the first person who actually got my interest in reading up consistently to work with my cards. <laughs> Yay! Um, you do wonderfully with your cards. They resonate with you, so keep working on it. <laughs> Kimberly says, tell me where you found $500 on the sidewalk. I want you to. I know. It happened years ago. We were going to get clothes, and I found it on the sidewalk, and I was like, oh, I can get clothes. I love it. <laughs> 
Pamela says, no, but just do three card readings for 15 minutes and try to stick to the time. Otherwise, an hour for Celtic's Cross. Yes, you can do that. I used to do that too. One time when I was still learning the pyramid, we went for five hours. It was a free reading for a neighbor. Ooh. Oh, no. That took too long. <laughs> yeah, if, if you go too long, you can. Like, you have the power if you are with somebody that you're not vibing with. If the reading's going for fucking ever... Or they keep doing that and should this and da, 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 and they keep going off of you. You have the right to walk away from the situation. Okay? You have a right to fire that person. Even if it's free. <laughs> like, nope, I'm going to cut it off here. I hope you have an awesome day, though. Bye. <laughs> Kimberly, I love improv. Me too. I miss seeing improv. Lisa says, the test, the psychic. Uh-huh. I don't like that game and refuse to play it. Me neither. Anna says they give you the empty whiteboard and expect you to read when they've written there with invisible ink, sort of. Yes, that's a perfect analogy. Hi, Chris. I'm glad you got to catch it today, too. Kimberly says I get enough of those people who come into therapy. Yeah, because you're, you, you're a psychologist now, and it's a drain and really frustrating. I'm here to help you, but don't waste my time. Exactly. Like, don't play with me. You're on my dollar, so you're wasting your time anyway, but don't fuck with me. That's one way to never work with me again. <laughs> okay, so here's another one. And this one has a fun story to go with it. Who here, comments or likes or hearts, um, has heard that all psychics or scammers or tarot readers or rune readers or whatever you want to work with are, are scammers and in it for the money, so charging is wrong? Who's heard that? And that makes me angry. <laughs> it's not true. Oh, okay. So first off, if you do this full time, like I do, this is your job. I have set hours. I get up. I have my breakfast. I come in here and I work. It is my job. If I were to go to McDonald's and have somebody make me a sandwich for free... I'm using their time, using their inventory, using their money, and expecting a free product in return when that does not how it, that's not how it works. If I go into a tax professional's office, I am paying for a service. They're sitting there looking at my stuff. They're helping me with my life. They are seeing the nitty gritty of my payments and helping me through it. I'm expected to pay for their time. Same thing with me. Okay? I put in the time. I put in the hours. You pay. Okay? If you are not at that point where you want to ask people to pay for it. If you don't have that confidence yet, that is your decision. Um, but at the same time, that does not mean at 3 a.m. people are allowed to message you asking for a free reading or to treat you like crap for it. Don't do it. It's not worth it, and it's it's not you. It's It's really not. And not everybody is a scammer. So... Funny story of what happened, like literally what happened. I'm going to admit names because this literally happened. So I was doing some work for some clients over the weekend and I got a brand new one. Someone that was suggested to me from someone and I still don't know who recommended them, but thank you for recommending. Um, I really, really appreciate it. And she's like, I trust you immediately because my friend recommended you and I really want to work with you. Cool. Cool. I gave her my usual rate, which is 97 for an hour, okay? Because that's what I need to pay my bills, 97 for an hour. Um, she's like, I can't do that, okay? So let's knock it down. I gave her a really, really good deal for a lower-priced reading. Got it to her in 24 hours, like all my readings. I gave her the same treatment as everyone else and told her, wait two weeks, because my standard is wait two weeks to make sure that things change, Okay don't go into a reading and expect everything to happen the next day. You need to give time, things to breathe. That's why for reading for yourself, don't pull 15 cards about the same subject within a half hour of each other. Don't do that. You're going to confuse yourself. Give it some time to breathe before you do the exact same subject. So I was giving it time to breathe with, with this client and they messaged me and said that this person also contacted them and told them for the person she wanted to be with, it was a love reading, that they needed to do a um, a twin flame rebinding spell. I don't know the price of it. But she said needed to do this and it's 100% guaranteed and within 
five to ten days it was going to work or she'll get her money back. Personally, my alarms went off. I did not like that. And I told her, it's honestly, I don't care who you go to because you can go to a different person down the street. I don't really care. I don't have any control over that. That's your choice. Um, but I don't like that it's 100% guaranteed because we're human. No one is perfect. Um, and I don't like that she's already saying that if it doesn't work, you can get your money back. If that's their policies, whatever. But I didn't like that. That sounded funky. That gives me reason to think, well, is it going to go wrong? Am I going to have to ask for my money back? This woman scammed, this this person scammed this client out of a crap ton of money. Hi, Catherine. Um, and she mess and they messaged me the next day like, oh my God, I should have listened to you. I'm so sorry. And I'm like, that's you. And I helped them report it and I was coaching them through it. And I actually have a blog post that I should have given them earlier. <laughs> That I would have given her earlier if it came to my mind. Um, for scammers that I sent it to her. And said here, this is for the future. And it's just, I'm kind, but I'm no, I don't push you past your limit. I don't want to push you past it. Because that's really shitty. I don't like those hard sell people in the mall even while we're, I'm trying to buy candles and you're trying to sell me a straightener and you're chasing me. I don't like that crap. I'm not going to do that to you. So if you don't want it, fine. No skin off my nose. Bye-bye. But if you want to work with me, you will be taken care of. I'm not going to scam you out of the money. Okay? So it's a matter of not all people are like that. She had a clear difference of someone who was not going to push her past a level and somebody that did and then didn't deliver because she turned around as soon as she said... As soon as she did the spell with her, she said that uh, she found a cancer in the person she was trying to work with. When this was not a Reiki thing, it was literally just to bring them together. So she found them a spiritual cancer, and if she didn't do anything about it for $5,000, that it was going to grow. No, that's not how that works. Um... And then when she started to back off and started realizing she loses, she tried to get her the, with the fear again and said, you have an incubus attached to you and your child. I'm like, hell hath no fury like a mama when you fuck with her like that. Don't do that crap. Um, and it's true. It fucking happened. <laughs> and I'm thinking this woman doesn't know what, a suck, what an incubus or a succubus is, first of all. But also, you don't scare people like that. Because that's how... Ooh, you don't do that mess. And I wouldn't do that mess to people. So it's not all scammers, not all psychics are going to scam you like that. Because that's fucked up. I go by the platinum rule, not the golden rule. How it's like, do unto others as they do to you, like the golden rule. I do the platinum rule, which is why I'm awesome at customer service. Where it's like, I'm not going to treat you the way I want to be treated. I'm going to treat you the way that you want to be treated. Do you want to hear that someone is attached to you and your kid? Fuck no. Uh-uh, 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 I'm not going to do that to you. I'm going to be like, okay, I understand what it's like to be in a money bind, so I'm not going to push you on this money thing. That just shows how much you value me right now. I'm not going to push you past it. And then we'll see how it goes. So if you run into somebody who tries to do that and they think you're a scammer, be up front. Tell them, I'm not going to do that crap to you. Because why would I do that? I wouldn't want, to, want someone to do that to me. Platinum rule. Do unto others as you would want them to do to you. Like, treat them how they want to be treated. Not any other way. And people will love you <laughs> because you treat them how they want to be treated. And I'd expect the same thing in return for me. Let's see. Yeah, it really makes me go mama bear when I hear about that. Me too, Anna. I was like, oh, hell no. <laughs> not doing it. Mm -mm -mm. Hi, Leanne. Camus is way not cool, especially if there's stuff you don't play. Do what you can help within reason. Exactly. Do not push it. Ah. So, again, when it comes... To to believing that you're a scammer if you're wrong or you're fake if you're wrong or if you charge for money and then people say you're fake and you're a scammer and all kind of stuff it's again about equal energy exchange in exchange for my time you were giving me something of equal value back 
in this case, money. You help me pay my bills if you take my time away from my business. That works, okay? Because um, this is honestly the hardest customer serve jo service job out there, okay? This is, I've worked at Amazon. Um, I've worked fast food. I've worked in hotels cleaning people's toilets and sheets and stuff. I've, I've done everything. I've done catering. Any kind of customer service job, I've already done it. <laughs> and then on top of that, I was an actress. Um, and so I'm catering to you for your entertainment. I'm here to entertain you, literally. So this is really the hardest customer service job because you're your own boss. You get to see the nasty side of people that you don't see at a restaurant. You can sometimes see at a restaurant if you're a server. You can sometimes see it in a retail job where people get really nasty with returns and what they're going to pay for, that kind of thing. But this is in a way kind of like being an actor going out finding a job. You're not only selling the service, you are selling you. That's why for the longest time, uh, psychics and whores and tarot readers and actors were all lumped in the same category, is because you are selling your personality, their face. If I could say all that you like, and you could resonate with it, but you might not like my nose. And it's distracting. So fuck you, I'm not gonna buy from you. <laughs> and that's your own thing, because I am the product. Not in a sexual way, but in how I'm helping you. How I talk and I move and I speak, I'm selling that. So even if it's for something that's free, I'm still doing customer service. Okay, so especially if you ever decide to do this as a business, you have to take care of your own finances, you do your own schedule and your own time, you are a package deal of a business owner, except you're not selling a retail mug or a bag or something, you are selling the service that you can give, like a freelance writer. They're also really good ones to give this analogy with. Or freelance gamers and gaming testers. People who are on their own bosses, you are selling what you are capable of as well as how well you can deliver the monologue. <laughs> and I've had practice with that because, again, acting. But sometimes it's hard, especially if you're not from a theatrical background or from someone that can stand out like that. So keep that in mind. People are not only paying for services, but they're paying for you as well. Hi, Courtney. Hi, Tammy. So there were comments. Let me look at that. Catherine says, it's ethical and moral. You have to make sure they're okay and you are too. Exactly. That's my top thing. It's like, are you okay? Like, aside from all the other stuff, are you personally okay? Is your sanity okay? Kimberly, though you often have the best stories doing any kind of people services work. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> because <laughs> that's what my husband loves about this. He doesn't care about what I do. He cares about the stories afterwards. It's like, so who was crazy today? <laughs> and he gets the popcorn out and he's just enjoying himself. <laughs> okay, here's another one. Here's another one. You are not a real tarot reader or rune reader or palm reader or any of that if you do not memorize the keywords. Who has heard that bullshit? There we go. Sorry, someone tried calling me. Who's heard that? It's bull honky. <laughs> it's so bad oh I hate it this is why I love intuitive reading <laughs> okay so if for those who don't know what I'm talking about when I'm saying intuitively when I say it I'm talking about using your personal experiences your memories things that have happened to you in real life um, movies books music your hobbies anything that is inherently you that pops to mind in your own little Jiminy Cricket voice in your head that's calm usually and usually tells you the correct thing to do but you like to ignore it, that is your intuition. There's a difference between that and the ego voice. There's nothing wrong with having an ego where your ego will say, well, what about this or this or I doubt or I angry or fuck this person or oh, I feel sorry for her though. Should I really be selfish? That's your ego voice. That keeps us in check from just the intuitive so that it's a happy balance between the two so first of all it's bullshit memorization 
is crap. I can tell you from having to memorize plays in a couple of weeks <laughs> um, or even a couple of days. I can tell you from in music having to memorize notes. I can tell you from memorizing math. Fuck Pythagorean's theorem. <laughs> I hate numbers. Um, it, it's... <laughs> It's irritating, but if mem no one likes to memorize everything. The work that comes in with being a real reader of any modality is the personal inner work as well. And you will learn so much more from relating the cards or the runes or the symbols or the lines or whatever you're doing with more to what you believe than you will to everybody else. And that's why... For my stuff, for my students, I tell you, pull the card, write down what it reminds you about first, then open up the book, then go on Google, then compare it to other people and see what they say and see, okay, I'm not wrong. Let's compare and let's balance it. Let's make it nice and even. So then I personally know the King of Wands is happy, and he's supposed to be super dad, and he's fiery and energetic, and he's the structure kind of fire, so he's maintained. He's the Fire Lord, if you want to go with Avatar. Um, he's Dracula, if you want to do Castlevania, because I'm staring at him right now. That kind of thing. He is the master of his element. But fuck him because he reminds me of the guy from Office Space, the boss, and he gets on my nerves. <laughs> I don't mesh well with people who have a King of Wands personality. I never have. Exactly! That's why I picked him, Kimberly. <laughs> she says, Zuko's dad was such a jerk, though. Yes, the Fire Lord, <laughs> played by Luke Skywalker and the Joker, same voice actor. I can't remember his name right now. <laughs> and my husband's gonna hate me later um but screw him because he is the king of wands he can be an asshole but he maintains his fire enough to where he can create electricity azula is the queen of wands his daughter she's an asshole i hate her she's nuts she pisses me off but she is a master at her element hence why she can do lightning and zuko can't Mark Hamill. Thank you, Kimberly. <laughs> but you see what I mean? So it's okay for me to hate the King of Wands, but I know his other aspects and what other people have compare him to. So when I go into a reading, I'm thinking of all these different characters. I'm thinking of all these situations where I've had a King of Wands in my life and I've wanted to punch him in the face, but how sometimes the King of Wands can be a really nice person and be really genuine. And I know that personality. So instead of focusing so much on keywords, relate these cards to people in your life. Think when you think of um, the six of cups, think of for keywords that is um, thinking back to your childhood, reminiscing, happy memories. Whenever I think of that, I think of running into a friend from high school that I am super awkward around because I knew you in a different time and I have no idea how to act with you now. But it's nice to see you. Oh my God, how are you doing? Holy crap, you have a kid. That kind of thing. Relate it to your life or think of it in a movie where two friends haven't seen each other for forever. Like, um... Across the universe, when he's they're singing Hey Jude and he's going to get Jude at the airport, them running towards each other is a Six of Cups moment. The imagery, use it in your thing. Think of how it relates to you. It's so much better. <laughs> yes. Yes, hi, Courtney. Yes, I have that moment with Courtney. I haven't seen you in frickin' forever. Hi. Even if it is through technology. Great to see you too. <laughs> so that's one as well. Because when you start doing that, sometimes then it's not even just with that. So a lot of people in the group were having issues with believing that they're psychic just because people say that they're psychic because they read tarot cards. Everybody has the capacity to use their intuition and their natural gifts. It's just how you learn and it's how 
information easily comes to you. You're not crazy for hearing shit, <laughs> unless you know it's some it's something on a completely like brain chemical imbalance level. That's something completely different. But if it's something more of you're receiving information or if you have a sudden urge to turn around in your car and then there was an accident, you realize that. So it's okay to not believe that you're psychic, even though you may have that intuitive voice there. You're just not paying attention to it as much. And here's, it comes up in different ways. Sometimes you could start out just as a tarot reader or whatever modality that you're using, and all of a sudden, you start noticing other things. You know, you start noticing, holy crap, I'm hearing something during a reading. And I, it sounds like the news network, I can hear a touchdown happening and someone yelling about it, but no one in my area is watching football. What in the hell? Clear audience. It's perking up. It's happening, you know? Or... I can paint this really vivid picture in my head of anything that anybody says. And that doesn't mean I'm crazy or that my brain is wrong. It just means I'm clairvoyant. And that's how my brain works. Okay? It's just sitting down and figuring out. Sometimes reading Taro will start popping those things up. Or if you have a traumatic experience. And traumatic meaning a really high stress situation. Like a car accident. Childbirth is one of them for a lot of women. Um, my empath stuff started popping up more. But that's because I have an empath for a daughter and she gets overwhelmed very easily. Um, it can... Someone dying or you going through a really traumatic thing, like really low depressive period in high school. Um, a lot of teenagers, that's why they get the psychic the psychokinesis and they start things start happening in your house when you have teenagers in the house because a lot of the times it's their energy spiking and they don't realize it. Um, if you're a medium naturally and you don't realize it but you start seeing shit pop up, if you're in a high stress situation that's what happens. So it could be trauma that brings it up. All kinds of different ways will unlock that area of your brain because we don't use the our entirety of our brains. So it's just a matter of learning your personal triggers and just because you don't believe you're psychic but you're a tarot reader doesn't mean that you're fake, okay? It doesn't mean whatever answers are coming to you in the cards are wrong. They're not. It just requires some personal study in order to get through it, you know? It's okay. Let's see. And just because you, someone comes up to you and says, read my mind right now, doesn't mean that you're wrong either. Not all of us are like that. <laughs> Not all of us are, you know, Professor Xavier. It's okay. I see Catherine says you're so good at pulling the two, ego and intuitive, together. It's so helpful. I'm so glad. Yay. I'm glad I can help you. Courtney says, the most precognitive I get is thinking I should pack a jacket and then ignoring it and regretting it later. Listen to that. It's your intuition, Courtney. <laughs> Listen to it. Michelle says, my son told me he had the feeling someone was stalking him. And when I asked, he said they were in the clouds. And sometimes it felt good. Sometimes it felt bad. Ooh. Yeah. Because you have access to the academy. Use, um, use some of the exercises in there with him if he's, if he's open to it. Um, especially the mediumship one. There's a meditation with it. See if he wants to listen to it. Anna says, sometimes I notice that it's good to be me nowadays since daughter can get honest and helpful answers when she feels, senses, hears, and sees things. Yes. If you have children that are entering preteen and teenagehood, <laughs> um, this is really going to help because it's going to help make everything. It, it was funny. Being pregnant... Just being pregnant, not even having the kid yet, really opened me up because I was paying attention to every little movement and every energy spike in my body with a fine tooth comb. And I was paying attention in such detail that we would regularly go to the doctor and the doctor would say I was fine. But I'm like, I can feel something energetically is off. Okay? That's why, um, besides having back pain... I didn't have any pain during labor. Um, anytime I did have a contraction, my body just moved. But I didn't feel any pain anywhere else. Because I had already done so much energy work already. And I was starting to work on meditation and stuff. That I'm like, 
I'm just letting it go. I'm just letting it flow. Um, and it's still that way with Lily. <laughs> Both me and her had more energy exchanges than we did actual words um, when she first got start when she was first born. Let's see. Lisa says, my answer to read my mind is usually, are you sure you want me to say that out loud? <laughs> I might steal that. Ah. <laughs> so, okay, a couple more. If you don't think... One, one other thing is people believe that if you don't have the same meanings as everybody else, you're wrong. We already kind of touched on this, but no, you're not. Because your intuition speaks to you in a million different ways. That's why I made the costume your cards challenge where everybody pays attention to the clothing in their cards in case you like clothing. That's why we just finished the Create a Musical Tarot deck so you guys have a musical deck to help you unlock your intuition and get really in depth with the keywords that's why I give you those kinds of exercises because they make you think outside the box and it expands your intuition in turn. That's why we're all always going to be students. We're all going to be learning because our brain is ever expanding. We're getting multiple new wrinkles, you know, and exactly. Lisa says everyone reads through their own life experience filters. Exactly. It's a perspective thing. So expanding your perspectives sharing in the group all your card spreads like everyone's been doing, doing live streams to practice and then everybody feeding off of each other is a wonderful way to start because you are combining your knowledge with somebody else's. And it helps you understand, okay, I might not like the King of Wands, but this person has another perspective and that's wonderful. Okay, my knowledge of that card expanded. Okay, and it helps you see more sides. Let's see. And seriously, all of us are consistently learning and evolving through our practices. So don't feel like you're behind the curve no matter when you start. Okay, because shout out again to Amanda for going live in the group and testing. If you guys want to go live in the group and try it out, go for it. I don't care. Go for it. You don't have to ask me for permission. As long as you're not showing up and saying, hey, can I have a free reading and there's no energy exchange, then I have a problem. But as, if you show up and you want to practice, go for it. I love practice, just like I love questions, okay? It's also, shout out to everybody in the group that is a first-time parent or has a million kids or are students and doing this or running their own businesses and you still want to take the time for yourself to learn how to do this and get in touch with your intuition because that's fucking amazing, okay? You are doing something wonderful for yourself and... I'm super proud of you for that. That's amazing. Okay. So use your natural strengths and habits to make yourself stand out. Tarot reading is the perfect place to be different. Reading runes, reading poems, reading all kinds of stuff is the perfect place to stand out and be different. Because, for example, I am a natural moderator. My birth number is an 11. So I'm, I'm an, a moderator as I am numerology, in, in numerology. So, I constantly come from that justice perspective. And I can literally hear anything and I won't really freak out. I've... I've had somebody die in front of me before and just been... I can handle it. I'm a, I'm a rock. That's how I am. I'm double Taurus. <laughs> but that's just how I am emotionally. I can handle it. So, if you come up to me and tell me you murdered somebody, that's bad. Stop that. You should probably run from the police. But it's not going to bug me. It, it doesn't. And that is how tarot reading works for me. I You can throw any situation at me, whether you cheated on somebody or you're going through a really hard time personally and you're hurting yourself. I don't want you to do that. And I'm going to suggest that you get psycho, psycho, psychiatric therapy. But I can work with you on whatever you got. It doesn't work for me. Yes, Courtney, yeah, that's the Chinese Zodiac. She's talking about how she's a dog. Um, that's the Chinese Zodiac. I'm also a dog with you because we're the same year. Um, but for the rest of the Zodiac, how Taurus, Aries, all that kind of stuff right now, we're moving. We officially entered Taurus today. I'm Taurus Sun and I'm Taurus Moon. Shoot me a message and I'll send you links to your birth chart to help you with that. But I'm also really, I'm a creature of habit. 
<laughs> I like routine, which makes it easier for an assassin to kill me, but it helps me be predictable. So you will get the same thing every time you get a reading with me. Super easy, you know? Um, I grew up in a toxic relationship with my, with my family. And I've had romantic relationships that were toxic just as well. So that really helps me gain perspective and use my examples in my own life to help other people in the exact same situation, you know? And not say that I'm in your shoes, but I'm there to help, you know? I understand and I relate, you know? Um, or for example, I have a soulmate experience, which yes, we are soulmates because palmistry. Um, I left. And right now I have a client who's going through that exact same thing, only she was on the receiving end where her soulmate left. And um, she's like, they don't understand how much it hurt. And I'm like, ooh, you sound, ooh, I've been in this situation. Um, and yeah, it really fucking sucks on both sides. I've been on both sides, so I can help her through that. And I really love that. As well as, again, doing that platinum rule. So it's like, I'm using me. I'm using my knowledge of theater and books and music. I'm using parts of my life that have happened as well as everything else that I learn every single day in order to help people. So you being 100% uniquely yourself is a wonderful way to do readings. And there's nothing wrong with it. You're totally valid by doing it your own way. Let's see. There were people. Courtney says, oh, there's a Native American one too. Yes, there's one for every culture for Zodiacs. Anna says, I'm a monkey in the Chinese and a salmon in the Celtic. Ooh. Catherine says, I'm an Aries sun and moon. <laughs> so fire. You're ready to go to war, man. Uh, Leticia says, I'm glad I'm not alone when I'm contemplating how easy it would be for an assassin to get me. <laughs> but once we, yeah, no. Yeah, I think about it, I'm like, I really shouldn't be having the same pattern, <laughs> but whatever. I guess that's kind of a compliment if somebody wants to assassinate me. They they don't like me enough to pay someone money to come grab me. <laughs> uh, Kimberly says, I'm a goat in Chinese zodiac and a swan or vine in the Celtic. Awesome. Courtney says, is it weird that I keep having nightmares about zombies? It's not fun. Please tell them to <laughs> stop trying to gnaw me. Ah! Um, so, okay, that's a control thing, Courtney. If we go by the Halloween Oracle and its version of zombies, um, it's imagining someone coming back and them not having any control over their body. Imagine how that would feel. So you feel like you're not in control of the people around you and they're doing what they want to do, which people are going to do that. So then they reach out and they're trying to eat you in that sense. Um, so yeah, zombies. And if you want to stop having nightmares, um, let's see, good nightmares remedies. Lavender underneath your pillow. Amethyst underneath your pillow. Taking a pot in a pan and smacking it and saying, fuck off dreams. That works. <laughs> Anna says, a couple years ago, my daughter woke up complaining about a zombie that chopped up her middle with a gigantic ax. Ooh. So someone trying to segment her. She's not in control of people trying to segment who she is and pick apart every single piece that she is. At least that would be my first impression. But you see what I mean for this, though? When it comes to, like, reading in general, it's expand your knowledge, find what you love and what you're good at, and then make it completely yours and have fun with it. Because what's the point in doing something with a piece of cardstock that everybody is likes to freak the hell out about than having fun. <laughs> Amethyst really does help with sleep too. Yeah. It helps you get no nightmares. So does anybody have questions for this? Cause you know I love questions. Does that make sense? Did I did everybody get some clarity? Because this was really for the people that we're feeling really judgy about themselves and how their abilities work or how their reading works and not being the exact same as everybody else. You know, that's why even um, 
and the inserts that everybody in the academy gets and all the stuff. So all of that, that's why I give you space to write your own stuff as well as compare to popular ones and my own personal ones. So, you know, really love yourselves because I love you guys. Y'all are, y'all are valid. I have no problem with you. You hit all the important points. Awesome. Ah, my phone missed the most important, missed most of that. Can you message me? Sure. Yeah, message me, Courtney. Leticia, absolutely awesome. So, what's going to be happening? Like I said, for the Moon Sister Activation Circle, um, next month we will be going live in our group, in the Crone Academy study group, so don't worry about freaking out um, and missing it because it will be us. If you guys missed it yesterday, there will be a replay going up, um, and the freebie is in the group since I fucked up and <laughs> Facebook was being stupid. So another thing is we have stuff that's going to be happening on the 18th next month. We're going to do a, another uh, workshop. So that will be in the group and I will hopefully not post to my own personal timeline again. Whatever. I'll share the replay for this in the group as well for people who couldn't cross over. Um, like I'm still getting... I thought I was friends with Lena. No! Glad I can watch this replay. No problem. I'm going to put it up. It's okay. Yeah, Facebook's stupid. <laughs> but I hope everyone has an awesome day. I really love chatting with you guys about this. I thought we got a lot, you know, discussed and had an awesome energy exchange. I love it. <laughs> but for everybody um, that is in the Academy, I will see you on Monday because we're starting the second week of the Elemental Challenge. There's still time to jump in and join us if you guys want to join the Academy. Um... But besides that, I will see you guys later. <laughs> Bye.